also today we do have a slightly different video as you can see from my little setup here. So I have done baking videos before in the past which were to do with my intolerances and do you know what, my kitchen is half done so I thought let's do some Halloween baking videos because who doesn't love cupcakes on Halloween? I mean come on. So hence the the makeup and the wig as well. If you've not actually seen this wig before, it is in my Wish wig haul, so I'll just pop that in the eye above for you so you can go and have a look at that video. But yes, today we are doing some cupcakes, and the cupcakes that we are going to bake today are these ones right here. So I do have two camera angles set up, so I've got the one that's right in front of me right here, and then I've also got this one over here. So hello, camera angle. So that is just so you guys can actually see everything that I'm doing on this video. So without further ado, let's get into some Halloween baking. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make my chocolate spider webs that are actually going to go in the top of cupcakes. So I'm going to do two different sizes. We're going to have larger ones or smaller ones and we're going to mix it up a little bit. So in front of me I have my melted chocolate. So this is dark chocolate and this is what I'm going to use to make my spider webs. So I'm going to make two different sizes of spider webs. I'm going to make a larger one and a smaller one, and then we're going to just mix it up on top of the cupcakes when they're ready and when they're all iced. So in this, I do actually have one tablespoon of coconut oil. So I've just popped that in there and it just helps it to melt a little bit nicer. And it's a bit nicer when you pipe it out as well. And you don't need it as hot as you would normally do because it won't dry out as quickly. So I'll just get my little piping bag with my little nozzle on there. Oh no, my spider fell off. I'm just gonna spoon it in and hopefully it won't run out the nozzle on the end. I'm making a mess. Probably worth folding the nozzle up as well so it doesn't all dribble out. So now I'm going to start piping my spider webs. So this is going to be messy, very, very messy. But what's Halloween without a little bit of a mess, eh? They just look like splats. This is so cool. Don't worry, they all look like spider webs. Trust me. Obviously, I will say spider webs aren't a perfect science unless you are a spider. So, if they're messy, they're messy. If they're not, brilliant. There we go. So, they are my chocolate spider webs. Like I said, it's not an exact science when you're working with chocolate, but they're my spider webs. So, I'm going to pop them into the fridge 
and just let them set while I get on to doing the cupcakes. So for the actual cupcakes we are going to do a very 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 simple vanilla cupcake recipe and all that we need is 125 grams of butter. I tend to use salted butter so I don't have to put any salt in afterwards or while it's mixing so I use salted butter. 125 grams of caster sugar, 125 grams of self-raising flour. I've got two large eggs and I've also got some milk as well. So I actually use soy milk because we don't have any other milk in the house. Any milk is fine, whole milk just makes it taste a little bit fluffier, but soy milk is absolutely fine, almond milk absolutely fine, you can use whatever milk you want. And then also have some vanilla extract there as well, because obviously it's a vanilla cupcake. So these cupcakes I am actually going to colour, I mean come on it's Halloween, why are we not colouring these? But the colour that I'm actually going to do is I do have black cupcake cases, but I am using a mirror colour and I have a black as well, so we're going to make these cupcakes black. So I'm going to start by actually putting the butter in the mixer, I'm going to let that cream for a little bit and after that's creamed then I'm going to add the sugar. So let's get into it. I'm just going to add my butter into my mixer, make sure that's all out of my bowl. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Might help if the mixer was a little bit further in. And what we want to do when we're actually creaming the butter is we just want to make sure that it's quite nice and fluffy. It is yellow when it goes in, it needs to be a creamy colour when you add the sugar in. Reason for that, you're getting air in there, you're fluffing it up, so you're going to have a nice fluffy cupcake. So I'm just going to scrape it down, mix it up. So it's going quite nice and fluffy and it's looking really good. I think maybe we need another sort of another minute on that one and then we can get the sugar flowing in. Okay, so that's looking really good to me. So that is really nice, it's gone quite creamy compared to the colour that it was before. I'm just going to add the sugar in and make it all nice and fluffy. So in goes the sugar. Let's mix it up. start with otherwise you're going to have butter and sugar going everywhere so just increase it very gently very gritty and very very thick. It's got a really really nice creamy kind of texture so let's carry on with that. It may take a couple of minutes just to get there. So that is looking lovely and creamy and it's not as grainy as it was. So we are ready for our eggs. Right, some people think this is really strange and can't quite get the consistency right, but it doesn't matter because the flour's going to go in afterwards. But you've just got to try not to let it coagulate. Is that the word? I don't know. So we'll start off with one egg. So I've got both of the eggs in here. So I'm just going to start off with the one and then I'll add the second one in when it's all combined. So 
So that is nice and combined, so it is quite smooth. So that's kind of what it looks like, a little bit like very runny scrambled eggs, but not as scrambled egg-like. And we'll just add the second one in and combine all of that together. So that's all nice and combined, it's looking good. So all we've got to do now is add the flour. So we'll just add the flour in. Ah, tidy as I go by the way. There we go. And we'll just gently add that in. You don't want to knock any of the air out that's actually already in that mixture. So we'll gently add the flour in on a very, very low speed. And then we'll add the vanilla. We'll add two to three tablespoons of milk, depending on how much it needs. And then we'll add the food coloring in. So we'll just give it a little bit of a scrape down, make sure all that flour is incorporated. Woo! Nearly made a mistake. So at this point I'm just going to add my vanilla in. I eyeball my vanilla every single time. Usually you tend to put in about one teaspoon. Sometimes I put in a little bit more, but I tend to eyeball mine. That was actually about a teaspoon. <laughs> so that's good. And now I'm just going to add one tablespoon of milk to start with and then we'll see what the consistency is like and then I'll add more from there. The worst thing you can do is add too much milk and then it goes really runny and then you've got really poor batter. And let's uh, get that mixed up. Okay, so the batter is actually looking really, really good. So I don't think we need much more milk in. I think maybe half a tablespoon more. Half a tablespoon more and I will get the black food dye in. This is so exciting. So this is Americolor. These colours are amazing. So I did use to use sugar flare and as you can probably tell this has never been opened. But I did use sugar flare for a while and they're really really good but some of them just aren't as pigmented and I heard a lot of really good things about Americolor and I thought you know what if when I get a chance when I need to order some more I'm going to go with Americolor. So I got my Americolor ones, I've used them a couple of times, my god I am in love so I think I may be getting some more. But this is actually a food colouring gel. So the reason why I use gel is because if you use a liquid food colouring, it can water down your mixture and you don't want that. So if you use a gel, it doesn't really change the consistency. It just means that you can use a little bit more if you want more of a vibrant colour. So I'm going to do a little squeeze and see how dark that gets. There we go, the batter is all in my cupcake cases there. So now I'm just going to pop them in the oven and they will go in the oven for about 20 minutes, 20 to 22 minutes on 175 degrees C. And when you see me, I'll be back with cupcakes and I will be making my buttercream. So I'm ready to do my buttercream. My cakes are actually out of the oven and they look really, really good. Look at those, oh my God, amazing. And they've got a nice flat top ready for when I actually pipe the buttercream on there. So to do my buttercream, I do need 150 grams of butter. So again, it is slightly salted butter. And then I have, you'll notice two bowls in front of me, and each of these bowls is 180 grams of icing sugar. So 340 grams altogether. I also have some more milk just to make it that little bit more fluffy and my vanilla as well, because we're just doing a plain vanilla cupcake, which is just gonna look a little bit fancy. So we're going with the vanilla. So what we need to do is we need to get our butter into the mixer and we need to really cream that. So what we need to do with that is get it so it's a very 
very creamy consistency and a creamy colour because right now it's quite yellow so we want it to be a very very creamy colour and then we can start putting our icing sugar in. By the end of it, everything is going to be white because icing sugar is very, very fine and it just goes everywhere. So we're going to do it one bowl at a time, hence the reason why I have it in two separate bowls. So there we go, that's why I've got it in two separate bowls. So we're just going to mix the first one in, get that all mixed up and then we'll add the second bowl in. So that's all mixed together now. So that's quite nice. There we go. It's all come together as you can see. So now I'm just going to add the next bowl of icing sugar, and you'll find out why I use the milk in a second. So it's just really low speed again. Get it all mixed up. And the reason why I have the milk is yes, it does make it a little bit fluffier, but if you just add one tablespoon of milk in there to start with, it will just help that last lot of icing sugar bring everything all together. And then as you go through, you can add a little bit more if it's not quite as fluffy as you want it. So that is actually starting to come together really, really well. It's starting to fluff up a little bit. So now is the time to add in the vanilla. So again, you do need about a teaspoon, but I tend to eyeball it. So let's drop some in there. There we go, a little bit more than a teaspoon. I like vanilla. Fun fact about vanilla, most expensive spice in the entire world. There we go, but you didn't know that. So that's my vanilla, that's actually in there, ready to go. So I'm gonna mix that around, let it fluff up quite a bit, and then I'm gonna add my food color. This is looking so fluffy, but it's still a little bit thick. So you'll notice when you go to scrape it down, it's still quite thick on the sides. This is where your milk comes in, because it will help Loosen it up a little bit and just get that fluffiness into it. So, scrape it down. Oh! Da -da. And then I'm going to add another tablespoon of milk in there. That hopefully help it loosen up a little bit. And then I'm going to add my purple food colouring in. It's violet, so it may not be really, really dark, but Again, Americola, so I'll leave that there. Let's get mixing. Wowza, so I am super, super happy with that. That colour is amazing. I'm so happy I chose purple. So let's just scrape it off here. Oh, spatula is stuck. Wow, I love that colour, oh my god. Just make sure it's all combined, because sometimes at the bottom of the mixer, you'll get some that hasn't got colour in, so just. So I'll just have a little bit of a tidy up, and then we can get on to putting the buttercream and the decorations on these amazing cupcakes. I am so excited. Right, so I do have my lovely buttercream right here, and I have my piping bag ready to go, and in here I have the Wilton 2D nib, it's absolutely brilliant, I love this nib, I use it for everything, I've probably got about 10 of them because I use it so much. So I'm just going to get the buttercream in there, I've got my spider's webs out of the fridge and I've left them on the tray to keep them cool because chocolate melts. I also have some sprinkles here which have got witches hats and all sorts in there. I've got spiders, so like a little ring and I'll use those. I'm gonna leave these on there because it'd be great for putting it in the buttercream. 
and then I do have some gold spray so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do these yet but we're going to find out so as before roll the top over and we'll spoon the buttercream in and we will get decorating do you know what I absolutely love my buttercream I have been so many places like since I started baking I've been baking for a few years now um, and I spent so long perfecting my buttercream and I go to so many places I'm like do you know what I'll try one of the cupcakes um, I have done it so many times I don't do it anymore unless I'm being naughty because of my intolerances and obviously my diet as well so but um, you know it was like you'd see absolutely gorgeous cakes and you think oh my god this is going to taste amazing and then you have some of the buttercream and you're just like do you know what that's really ruined it like the sponge really really nice and then the buttercream is just like too icy sugary is that even a thing but you know where it's like it doesn't taste i don't know vanillary or strawberry or whatever else it just tastes like you've put too much icing sugar in or you've not mixed it long enough so if you really want some fluffy gorgeous buttercream, definitely use this recipe. It is absolutely foolproof. You've just got to make sure that you are actually mixing everything properly. We don't need the bowl, so let's get rid of that. And now we can get on to decorating. So I have a non-slip mat here. Do you know why I have a non-slip mat? Because when you're piping stuff, you little, you'll snake all over the place. That is a non-slip mat. So here we go. There we go, so always squeeze from the top and use this hand just to direct it. Oh my god, it looks so amazing. So let's put some Halloween sprinkles on there. Oh my god, it looks so cute. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Oh wow, okay, look at that. I am so impressed with that. So let's go for once with a spider on. So squeeze from the top all the way around. Definitely need some sprinkles. I love sprinkles. Sprinkles on everything. We all need sprinkles, we do. And then let's grab a spider. Let's put him there, yes. Do you know what, shall we? How's that? Let me see. Oh. Okay, yeah, chocolate is getting the uh, sprinkles on. Let's go a bit gold with them. And it's glittery everywhere, it's lovely. So there is the one with the spider on. That is, I love that, absolutely love that. So it's actually really, really warm in here, so this chocolate is gonna melt. But let's try and get all these decorated and then we can have a look at the finished cupcakes. So there we go, they are my Halloween cupcakes. I absolutely love them. They're spider themed and they're amazing. I think the spider webs look absolutely brilliant and they're chocolate, so for anyone that likes chocolate, is there any better sort of spider web, really? 
But yes, these are absolutely brilliant. I really, really love them. I just think that the sprinkles really, really bring everything out and it really looks that little bit more Halloween-y. So if you do want the recipe for these cupcakes, it will be down below for you. So do feel free to go down into the description and everything will be there for you so that you can make these yourself. So there is nothing better than a taste test. So I think there's someone actually behind the camera that wants to try one of these cupcakes. So I think I may have to allow one. <laughs> He thinks they're amazing and he has a face full of cake. So that's always really, really good for me to know that my cakes are absolutely loved. But yes, that is it from me today. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen and watching me make some of these lovely Halloween bakes. But yes, if you did like this video, do feel free to give it a great big thumbs up and show it some love. I'd much appreciate it. And if you are new here, do feel free to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. Well, that's it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.